George Torreson. Uh, Parky Torreson was my dad, and uh, my grandfather was George and uh, Christina uh, Torreson. But uh, Mark Berge, you mentioned that, Jim, uh, married an Evenson. And uh, so that's another part of my uh, line. I'm a Torreson, Thompson, Nelson, Evenson. And. Uh... <laughs> well, her parents both died. So she and her two brothers were essentially orphans. Mom was 11, and the boys were probably uh, nine and seven when these two uncles took these kids over to raise. And your dad? The uh, best uh, fitting uh, uh, words for my dad would be that he was intense Norwegian and he was very intelligent and he was a total bookworm and read everything he could get his hands on primarily history and current events and he um, just loved to learn and was uh, sad and uh, he, he didn't feel good about being deprived of getting a college education. I don't know whether that's, you can hear that, because I can't. Okay. So, uh, he uh, um, suffered ha having <coughs> uh, his father die uh, to cut short his college education. He had to return to help his mother and younger siblings uh, on the farm. The Prussian came along, he was stayed there for 10 years helping her until she died and then felt at liberty to get married um, in his mid-30s. And um, he was all, always a bit um, perturbed about that and um, just uh, wanted me and all of my siblings to get a good education and work hard. So he was um, very strict in the sense that he wanted us to not misbehave, wanted us to work, and wanted us to be good students. She played the piano and, and she also uh, had a cousin in Chicago who, you're sweating. <laughs> So uh, she, they came out to see my folks or his, her folks on the farm at Geraldson Farm, and she heard, they heard uh, my mother play piano, and they offered her a year of piano uh, lessons in Chicago, and to be their maid, so to speak, and so she went there and she got to go to all the um, things that the. Uh, Chicago theater and all the, you know, this all these. This is before they were married. This is before your parents were married. No, no, they were married. Oh. No, no, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, she hadn't, I don't suppose she met Elmer at that time. But uh, I think it was a year as she was in Chicago and really learned a lot of the things that you learn in a big city. And she always was, had a refinement to her that a lot of other farm women didn't have. Mm -hmm. But uh, she was a president of the Ladies' Age. She was a, a choir director, um, a good pianist, and she taught all the kids in the neighborhood except her own, because her own were not. So you didn't learn to play the piano? No, oh, I can peck away at it. And Brigetta and Clown, or better at Brigetta and and uh, Connie didn't either. They learned to send off. So uh, she was such a busy woman. And, you know, she, she'd probably say what well, she was with the. Living room had the piano at it, and she would um, be cooking, and we'd be trying to practice. And she said, "No, that's not right. That do it again, do it again, and try it again." Where did you grow up? I grew up in Sheboygan, and I have don't have a whole lot of memories about Valders, but we did come here. One thing I do remember is the celebrations we would have, and we would come, and I would play with some of the people that are like Janice Helgeson and uh, Judy Thompson and that and we, I 
really enjoyed those things and I enjoyed hearing all the stories and seeing these old homes with the stereoptic and slides and things like that and I can just I can still smell the the, the uh, what you would when you walk into these old homes and that and I just I did love to come and do that but that was about the main thing but my aunt Esther lived here and so I saw I did come and visit her for many years even after I was a child and I did one audio recording of her uh, her memories and I enjoy that and my mother did one too in 1976 she went into into the pantry in her house and she recorded all of her memories and it took three audio tapes for her to do that and so it's wonderful. You know, wonderful remembrances there mm -hmm. he was weeping and we never saw him you, you went up to start over. You went, you went up the step. I went around. I just happened to go through the hall, and he was sitting in the on the front steps of the house, and he was crying, and he was crying. He was talking to the Lord, and he said, "Why did you have to take my son when all these I can't hardly really say it when all these drunks around here are no good and they don't do anything for anybody, and here you have to take my beloved son." That was it. And we were never you saw by him. yourself, or what? when when you heard this, were you by yourself, or were yeah, you I with your mom? Myself. Or you weren't. You didn't. I don't know. Yeah. No, I was alone. I just happened to go upstairs and and heard this talking out there, and I stood by the screen door, and that was it. I was talking to God. Just. And we had a we had our Bible time at night, and had he usually read the stories and. Just a, a great dad. Do you think that changed your dad? I think so. I think he became more attentive, perhaps, to people around and us. What about your mom? My mom was very strict. And especially when it came to boys or drinking or anything like that. <laughs> But she was wonderful. She sewed. She made things for us out of nothing. She'd get old clothes from, somebody would bring old clothes and she would take them apart and make our clothes. We went to school with all of our underclothes and everything were always from flower sacks and we never had to be ashamed because we were always, always dressed clean and neatly. So, and she was a good cook and a good baker and she sewed, well I said she sewed, and gardening and all of her work. She was sick an awful lot though. She, uh, oh, I often think, I often compared her with my husband because he was sick so much. And like my son coming home and saying, where's dad? And I said, he's in the hospital. and he. Each boy had a different reaction, but the youngest one would stamp his foot and he'd say, Dad, again, I, it's like I don't have a dad. And that's the way it was with, with our mother. She was sick so much. Not that we didn't think we had one, but she was sick a lot. And we had, had to do all we could for her and to help her. Um, what, was, what was the most important or valued thing or things that you learned from your mother? Oh my. Good cook. She's a good cook. She was um, a very uh, biblical person. She wanted us to know. We always had to know our lessons before we went to Sunday school. We always, she taught us good manners and so did my dad. And. Uh, I really feel that we were very fortunate to have such wonderful parents and they had good backgrounds and uh, my dad was the first one to get rubber tires on his tractor and he was the first one to get a, a, a threshing a, and a corn thing that you put the corn. Combine? Yeah, combine. I don't see, I, I've been away from the farm too long. But none of us and became... And a corn picker. Oh yeah, yeah, all of those things and raised good crops except that we were, uh, we had the river near us and we've had floods everywhere and of course he, he battled it all, he did it all 
and all the neighbors sort of came to Dad for... Now, what? was your farm part of the original Thomas Helle farm? Yes. Your farm and George's farm? George, yeah. The Sylvan was a mixture of, of humor and dry humor, and then Hartley was a very dry humor. You know, and you were never quite sure what he was coming at. But, yeah. Uh, you got all three of them. You had that combination under one tree on one Sunday afternoon. My dad was not one to ever raise his voice hardly, or I never got slapped or or spanked. Um, maybe I should have, but I didn't. And I always remember the time he and I were fencing down by the woods, and <clears throat> a bee stung me. And of course I started to cry and he told me to stop crying or he'd give me something to cry about. And boy, I stopped crying in a hurry. <laughs> That's the only time I can ever remember him saying that to me. And mom wasn't much of a, she wasn't a spanker at all either, so I don't remember getting spanked. And you turned out very well too. I made it, I guess. Yeah. Great mother. Mm -hmm. and I still think of her almost daily because she was so interested in us and, and she didn't really want us to stay around the farm. She wanted us to get out and do things that were good for other people and yeah, I think it kind of worked because Brigetta became a social worker and Connie became a pastor and I was a teacher shortly and Omar was a business gal. So uh, I think they did a good job. Yeah. Oh, they work in the garden a little bit, help pick things, um, go for rides. Grandpa and Grandma would like to go for rides. Um, you know, because at the time that I remember more, she was quite sick. So and then I worried about how Grandpa would be after Grandma died, because they were such a loving couple, and uh, just loved to spend time together. And I worried about him, and he, he was, you know, okay, but I think that's why he picked up with us girls, because he needed someone. And then he went to Shady Lane after, after she died, sometime later. He had been by Florence, he stayed by Florence for a while, and then he went to Shady Lane, and I can remember him driving out from Shady Lane with his, quote, girlfriends to come out to Faith Lutheran to church. And then as I got older, I could drive him out there. And one time we had a flat tire on 151. And uh, Grandpa was always a very broad man. And I can remember saying to him, oh, I can change this tire. My dad showed me how to change the tire. He said, oh, no, no granddaughter of mine is going to change the tire and I'm too old. So he stood at the back of the car looking, and Ward Shooty from Manitou came through and said, Mr. Thompson, are you having a problem? And he said, yeah, I got a flat tire, and I'm too old to change it, and I, my granddaughter can't change it. And he said, I'll change it for you. And I'm, uh, I would spend a couple of weeks, almost every summer, for several years there when Grandma was so sick. And I'm not sure how much of a help I was to her, but we worked in the kitchen. She loved to bake and cook, and, and she was, you know, getting tired. And I remember her uh, grandpa making her take a nap in the afternoon, even though she didn't want to go to bed um, when I was there. And I had a favorite plate that I still own to, to this day. It was given to me after she died. So, yeah, no, I remember both of my grandparents real well. Uh, my dad, Hartley Torreson, was born here in 1907. He was wow. the first to be born in the new house. And I'll bring... So the old house born, burned in what, 02, no, you said? No, in 36. My dad was born here in 1907. Oh, in the original house? The original house. And it burned in 36. That's right. And it was without a house on it until they moved until it Until they got the, the house out of glory. And I think that was about 40... Better get Ronnie up here because he's the one that... He, Ronnie was actually raised here. Now, who, now, where, now this house was where? It was, all we know is it was in Quarry. Yeah, no. Well, 
the happiest moments were of my mother and uh, uh, her influence. She was very positive. She uh, was inspiring and uh, I was happy to come home from school and see her and she was a teacher and it was wonderful to have her available to ask questions, tell me how to spell words, tell us what words meant, um, basically be a on-demand tutor and uh, she was the uh, goodwill ambassador of the family and she had been a teacher in the Valley School System and she also was able to introduce us as children to many other people and so um, our mother was an uh, inspiration to us. Okay. Of course I had one best friend who died last year. Can't talk about her very much. <laughs> We were friends all through high school and ever since high school. Actually, since eighth, since sixth grade. And she died the first of March this year. Just, just a couple months ago. <laughs> so that's what you call a lasting friendship. Yep. Yeah, we were good friends. Oh. You had a good time in high school. What was the worst of high school? <laughs> the worst was when I was a senior and my mother died. Mm -hmm. That was a little hard to take, but that's the way it is. And just before Christmas of your senior year. And uh, another memory I had, a very sentimental time, my dad stood here the year before he died, and he had preached in Valders, and he had already said, uh, this was the last time that I'm going to preach in this church. And he stood here and he said, this is the last time that I'm going to be on my father's and mother's farm. And uh, it turned out to be the case. So I always remember this, this drawbridge and his announcement at that time. He was kind of predicting his death. Here was Uncle George's farm. Boy, it's a lot closer than what I remember it when I was a kid. That farm looks like it's right, right on top of us. And these two farms used to be one farm. And then when Great Grandpa Edwin uh, left this area and went to North Dakota, then the two sons, George and Elmer, took over the property and Elmer built his new house in uh, 2012, or <laughs> 1912, built the new house where Grandma and uh, Grandpa, Elmer and Aletta, would live. And uh, George's place was awfully close by. Uh, and I guess I can help but tell you that he was a wonderfully good father. Uh, taught us uh, how to work how to be honest, how to be sincere, and uh, just just uh, the kind of guy he was. And we learned that from him. And uh, enjoyed uh, our, our youth uh, growing up on the farm. Because we grew up with him. We grew up side by side with him every day. Uh, One other memory I have is when Phyllis Geraldson married Ron Hendrickson. I was in the wedding. And then the Reception was held outdoors at the Geraldson Farm. I still remember. I have we have a painting here of the Geraldson Farm, uh, that area where the reception was, and I. Uh, uh, it was again a huge celebration at the time, and um, I. Uh, I said something that that time, which uh, lived on for some years after that. I, I. I went up to somebody, some woman who was expecting, and I said, when are you going to freshen? 
<laughs> I just learned that term. When a cow gives birth, you know, they freshen. So I had to use that term. And, and so everybody thought that was the funniest thing they'd ever heard. And, and uh, on a plaintive note, I remember um, one of the memories I have as a kid and living in St. Paul, I must have been seven years old. Uh, my dad came in one morning and he was shaken. And he said, Uncle Morton just died. We just got news that Uncle Morton died. And I think I saw somewhere it was 1948 he died. So I would have been seven years old. So he died a very young man. And we used to go and visit Aunt Hattie uh, quite often when I was staying at the farm. And uh, Lloyd and, was there. And, and um, But Aunt Hattie was such a gracious person and we just had we had to go and see her and she always had you know some goodies to to and sometimes Aunt Stella was there too who is her sister and and uh, we never missed an opportunity to see uh, Aunt Stella and, and Aunt Hattie and on the Geraldson farm I loved the Geraldson farm it was just a a, a beautiful farm and and uh, there was so much to see when we went there so I remember those days quite well Mom. Okay, my mom, uh, you know, she worked side by side on the farm all those years. Uh, she also, in the summertime, worked at the Pecanny factory here in town for just a four or five or six week session while they're during the canning season. And uh, she would save up money for different things, uh, put a new sink in the house or, you know, something that special that they wanted to do. And um, she taught Sunday school for many, many years, uh, belonged to the Women's uh, Association in, in the church, things of that sort. <coughs> and just a, just a real good mom. She could bake and cook, bake and wouldn't bake. <laughs> so she was a, a good gal, and uh, she had the same work, at, work ethics and, and uh, the same beliefs there. They were both uh, strong religious people. My dad was just everything to me. He always was. I just don't even know what to say about him. He was strong and he was a little bit hot-tempered sometimes, especially when you were dealing with the cows <laughs> or cutting the hay and missing the corners. He wasn't too happy about that. But uh, he just did so many things with me and taught me so many things. And I remember him saying to me when I said, I can't, I just can't. And he said, Joy girl, you can do anything you put your mind to. And then I knew I could do it. So that was something I always thought of my dad telling me, you can do it if you try. <laughs>